This is Australia. At nearly 7.7 .7 million kilometers squared, it ranks as the sixth largest country on the planet. It is found between the Pacific and Indian Oceans in the Southern Hemisphere. Greenland, on the other hand, is a North American autonomous territory of the Kingdom of Denmark, which, if excluding Australia and all other continental landmasses, would be the world's largest island, at some 2.1 million kilometers squared, around three and a half times smaller than Australia. On the Köppen climate classification, Greenland's entire area is classed as ice cap climate, or tundra climate. The vast majority of the island is freezing cold year-round. Australia, on the other hand, has a variety of climates, ranging from its majority desert climate to semi-arid to Mediterranean to tropical savanna climate. Apart from being gigantic landmasses, these two regions share very little in common, and in most ways are polar opposites. So what if we were to snap our fingers and switch the geographical position of these two landmasses? What would this new world look like and how would it affect the planet? So first things first, let's take a look at what our new world would look like and oh, we've run into a slight problem. Australia doesn't really fit where Greenland currently exists. If we were to place Australia onto Greenland's location, it actually extends deep into the Arctic, parts of Canada, and completely wipes out Iceland. It is also now within touching distance of one of its greatest allies, the UK. The Hudson Bay has also now been blocked off to Baffin Bay and the Labrador Sea, and thus its connection to the open oceans. This would therefore turn the bay into a lake, and in fact now the world's largest lake by some distance. Nearly four times larger than the Caspian Sea, which is technically the world's largest lake. Greenland, on the other hand, has now miraculously shrunk by quite some distance. Its height isn't too far off Australia's, but it is definitely more narrow. Greenland was already rather remote, so there's nothing new for the Greenlandic people. Well, other than them needing to throw away their winter clothes in exchange for shorts and bikinis. It is estimated to hold around 3 million cubic kilometers of ice. So if we were to swap it with Australia, it would now sit much closer to the equator, resulting in most or all of this ice to melt. This melted ice, along with the fresh water that was trapped underneath it, would now result in global sea levels rising by 7 meters, or 22 feet. This would completely and utterly reshape our planet as we know it today. It would cause instant global ramifications. This is in fact how the world would now look. It's hard to see with the naked eye, but if we zoom in, you can see that many places have now essentially been wiped out and claimed by Mother Nature. This drastic rise in sea level would displace tens if not hundreds of millions of people causing major migration shifts across the planet. Not only this, but the melting of Greenland's ice would also release large amounts of fresh water into the Indian and Pacific Ocean. This influx of cold, fresh water would disrupt ocean circulation patterns, potentially affecting the global climate system, which in turn would have drastic effects on global climates, ecosystems and wildlife. The Great Barrier Reef would also be no more. Even without switching the positions of Australia and Greenland, the reef is already struggling with incremental rises in temperatures, never mind this sudden influx of freezing cold fresh water. Just to add salt to the wound, the resulting permafrost thawing from Greenland would release vast amounts of greenhouse gases, like methane, into the atmosphere, which would increase global warming, likely causing sea levels to rise even more. This increased global temperature would further cause crops to fail, regions to become inhospitable, and mass migration on a scale we've never seen before. Speaking of crop failure, Australia actually exports the second most amount of grain on Earth, only just behind the US. The change in climate would cause the wheat trade industry to be severely hindered and or collapse entirely. All of the animals that currently exist in Greenland, such as ox, arctic foxes and reindeer, would likely perish in their new habitats and climate. These animals have adapted over the course of thousands of even millions of years to live in cold conditions. 
so suddenly plonking them into an Australian climate would be detrimental for the fauna. It isn't all doom and gloom, however, as Australia already has some alpine ecosystems prior to our hypothetical switch. Part of its snowy mountains already experience climates similar to what can be found in Greenland. These areas would already be better adapted to cold conditions, but the shift to polar climate would still be extreme. Another benefit for Australia is that its new position on Earth could be argued to be more favourable for trade purposes. It is now sandwiched in between Europe and North America, opening new trade routes and industries. With Australia being so big, it could utilise the abundance of wind and sunshine it would receive from those long summer polar days, potentially making the nation a natural resource powerhouse. This made up scenario, well, sucks for Denmark. Not only has the rise in sea levels wiped out most parts of its land, it has suddenly become extremely distant from Greenland, which although not too detrimental, it would be of some annoyance. Currently, Denmark is found just less than 3,000 kilometers away from Greenland, but after the switch, it is now some 14,000 kilometers, which would certainly cause some logistical and political downfall. New Zealand, which is one of the most remote countries on Earth, would also be severely hindered from this scenario. Australia is its second biggest export partner. It is also the 14th largest economy on the planet and has a population of around 26 million people. So switching Australia with Greenland would significantly weaken New Zealand's economy, as Greenland has a much smaller population and is substantially less financially important. Currently, Australia is obviously generally a very hot country and Greenland very cold, so their infrastructure and ways of life have adapted to adjust to their climates. Meaning most of Australia is built to keep the heat out, air conditioning is used throughout the country and many houses have swimming pools. Greenland is quite the opposite, the country is built to keep the heat in, air conditioning, I can imagine, is pretty much non-existent. So switching their geographical positions and therefore climates would render both of their infrastructure for dealing with the climate useless. On a less destructive note, another repercussion of this switch in geographical positions would also necessitate changes in time zones. Greenland, for example, would have to adapt to the time zone previously used by Australia. So do you think Greenland or Australia will be better off in this new world? It is a tough one of course because there are so many different variables. Greenland could open many new industries and sources of income whilst Australia will be closer to its allies and trading partners. So of course Australia and Greenland actually swapping places is impossible and this video was purely for fun. But overall if this was to somehow actually happen it's fair to say it would be catastrophic for the planet and humans. If you can think of any other potential implications, please do let us know in the comments below. And as always, thank you very much for watching.